What is going on guys? My name is Senna and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the operator in Valorant, how to use the op and why the op is one of the best guns in the game. I've been requested many times to make an op guide, so here it is. Right before we get into this video though, guys, make sure you go down in the description and follow me on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Senna VL. I'm going to start streaming on Twitch from now on just because the moderation is much better and the platform has been dedicated to streaming. There are so many bots on YouTube and the moderation is really lackluster, so it would just be a more beneficial decision for me to switch. Link for that is at the top of the description, twitch.tv forward slash senavl, and I hope to see you there. And also, if you do end up enjoying this video or finding it useful, don't forget to drop a like down below and subscribe to the channel for more content just like this. With all that out of the way, guys, let's get straight into the guide. Now, the operator is a very high risk, high reward gun. It's the most expensive gun in the game, running you 4,700 credits. The first thing that I want to talk about when it comes to opping is the agent that you're playing. I would say that as of the time of me recording this video, Jet and Chamber are the only real viable op agents. Now this doesn't mean that you can't get away with opping on other agents, but it's just much more difficult. Jet and Chamber both have get out of jail free cards that are very fast, so they are very good for opping. The next thing I want to mention is your sensitivity and also your scope reticle. I would highly recommend keeping your scope sensitivity on one so that it's the exact same as your regular sensitivity. This helps with keeping your aim consistent and not having two different senses for each one. Remember that this is personal preference and if you feel like you play better with a faster or a slower scope sensitivity, by all means go ahead. But generally speaking, when you're trying to learn the fundamentals of opping, I would recommend keeping this on one. And regarding your scope reticle, this is also pretty personal preference. My personal favorite scope reticle settings is center dot opacity at one and center dot thickness at 0.8. I really like the red color, but recently I switched to the yellow one and I've been enjoying that one as well. I feel like center dot thickness on one is a little too big for me personally. That's why I lowered it to 0.8. In my personal experience, it's easier to hit long long range shots with a smaller center dot thickness and easier to hit close range shots with a bigger center dot thickness. So feel free to mess around with these settings and figure out what works best for you. The next thing that I want to talk about is the big debate between toggle or hold for a sniper scope. For me personally, I prefer toggle all the way. I just hate having to hold down a button while aiming, but again, this is my personal preference. With toggle, you can just push the button and then have the same aim like you would with a rifle, which is what I really like about it. I feel like with hold, you might be able to have a little bit more of a fast paced opping style, but it's all really up to you. I'd recommend trying both of these settings out and seeing which one you like better. So to conclude my settings, my scope sensitivity is one, my center dot opacity is one, my center dot thickness is 0.8, and I use red or yellow for the center dot color on my sniper scope. Now that we've got all of these settings out of the way, I wanna talk about the three fundamentals to opping. These three fundamentals are peaking, crosshair placement, and positioning. I think these are all equally important skills to master, and they are all very different than rifling or any other gun really in the game. First, let's talk about peaking. There are three main types of ways Ways that you can peek with an op. The first way is a standard peek. A standard peek is when you hold A or D to peek an angle without crouching or jumping or anything like that. This is a pretty reliable peek and this is usually how I'm peeking with an op. The main downside to this peeking style is that your head is at a constant level so it is the easiest for you to get headshotted with. This mainly comes down to reaction time and anticipating the peek before you do it so that you're able to kill them before they can kill you and take advantage of that peeker's advantage. The next type of peek that I wanna talk about is the crouch peek. This is similar to the standard peek, except we're throwing a crouch in as soon as we expose ourselves. This will slightly throw off the enemy's crosshair placement, but will also make it so that you need to readjust slightly. I recommend using this peek when you're peeking a pretty common angle, or if you're peeking an angle that you've already been spotted at. The third and final type of peek that you can do is a jump peek. I do 
do this a lot and it's pretty good when you're going up against a rifle. To pull off this peak, right as you're about to expose yourself to the angle, you jump into it to throw off your enemy. This is kind of risky to do if you're peeking another op because you'll be exposed and not be able to shoot while you're airborne. Like I said, this is a pretty good peak against rifles because it'll be harder for them to hit the headshot on you and the longer distance they are from you, the better this peak will be. Now that I've talked about the three different types of peaks, I wanna talk about crosshair placement. Now, where you're holding your crosshair on an angle really depends on the enemies that you're going up against. If you're playing a team that is jiggling angles and taking their time with pushing sight and playing contact a lot of the time, make sure that you hold your crosshair close to the angle. If a team is playing really defaulty and slow, chances are they are not going to wide swing angles like this. It's important to anticipate a jiggle peak or a walk up when a team is not making any sound and they're playing really slow. On the contrary, if a team is five men running it down super fast, you wanna make sure that you're holding your crosshair further from the angle to anticipate for the wide swing. Basically what we're trying to do here is minimize the distance that we need to flick. This goes right back to my video where I talked about crosshair placement because this is the exact same concept with crosshair placement and raw aim. We want to have the best crosshair placement possible so that we have to use the least raw aim. If you have not watched my aim training routine video, I would highly recommend you watch that after this video because it talks and goes into more of the fundamentals and details with crosshair placement as a whole. Also, if someone jump spots an angle pretty commonly, it's also a good idea to hold your crosshair higher up to anticipate this jump spot. Your crosshair placement with opping will vary from game to game and it's really important that you learn how to read your enemies so that you can become a better opper. This is why it feels really hard for some players to op, especially in the lower ranks because they don't know how to read their enemies. It takes a long time to build up the ability to read the enemy and it's also a big part of game sense and the way that your enemies will play will vary depending on what rank you are or how fast you are ranking up. The third and final fundamental mechanic to opping, which I personally believe is the most important, is positioning. If you wanna get really good at opping, you need to understand how to put yourself in a good position, get one, and then reposition it to another good position to get another pick. I honestly believe that positioning is the main skill gap between mediocre and good oppers. This is the main reason why Jet and Chamber are really good for opping because they're able to put themselves in off angles or really bad positions because they can just get out of there after they get one. When choosing a position to op, you want to make sure that it's in a spot where they won't smoke you off or expect you to be in. And these don't even need to be crazy unknown spots either. On Icebox, for example, I see way, way too many oppers post up on top of generator on A site. While yes, this spot gives you a really nice view on A main, it's so common that everyone knows how to get around it. When you're attacking a site on Icebox and someone's opping in this spot, you can hug this right wall here and jump across and they will not be able to hit you. There are just so many ways to get around this spot and in general, you're pretty exposed to a few different angles here. So this is honestly not even a very good spot. I feel like the only way oppers actually get value out of this spot is if you're in a lower rank where people don't really know the common op angles or they don't have an initiation or drone to drone you out. Personally, where I like to op on A site icebox is right on top of rafters and hold belt. This seems so simple and it almost seems too simple, but this spot is really good. Every time I play here, I'm pretty much guaranteed to get one on top of belt because no one really expects you to be holding this with an op. As soon as people see that generator is clear and there's no one there with an op, people will just mindlessly swing belt trying to take a fight thinking that you're gonna be holding with a rifle. Not only is this spot good for catching people off guard, but it's also really easy to fall back into cover as well. This is just all around a really underrated spot that I don't see enough people using. Especially with the new changes on Icebox B site, I feel like it's so much easier to opt now because of all 
of the different angles that you can post up on. You could post up on top yellow and get a really nice view into B main. Or you could do what I really like to do, which is hugging the right wall over here. This spot is nice because you have an angle on people, whether they swing far B main or they walk through garage. The main thing about this is just get creative and play in spots that people won't really expect you to be in. And this ties in perfectly with repositioning yourself after your first shot. Let's go back to A site for my example. So let's say you're posted up on rafters with an op and you get one pick on belt. What I usually do from here is fall back to screen and hold this cross so that nobody can cross onto site. This is a really good spot because we've already secured man advantage, so playing back for my life or at least in an area where I can get traded is really beneficial. It's also important to pay attention to your man advantage because if you're down a man, sometimes I'll go for more of an aggressive peek to try to regain that advantage. And the key concept to being a good opper is to always take risks, never be too scared to go for a play. The best opera is always go for the plays that you least expect to work. I think that covers positioning pretty well, so I want to move on to the next topic, which is your secondary. When you're opping, it's really important to have a backup plan in case you need to switch to something close quarters. If you're playing Chamber, Chamber is really good because he has his Q ability, which is his headhunter, and this is basically just a sheriff. It's super good to quickly switch to if you need to fight someone. If you're playing Jet, her ultimate is a really good tool to use when you're opping because you can be super fast and mobile with it. If you don't have your blade storm, the secondary that I usually buy will depend on the map and where I'm playing on the map. For maps like Breeze and Icebox, which are more longer range, usually I'll buy a Deagle as a secondary. If I need to fight someone close range, chances are I'm not going to be in barrel stuffing distance and I'm going to be at a distance where a sheriff will do me well. For maps like Bind and Split, where it's a lot more close quarters, I'll typically buy a shorty. A shorty with Jet is really good because you can play around her smokes really well. If you miss an op shot, you can switch to your shorty and smoke the ground and push through it to get an easy kill on them. Frenzy is also very good as well for a bit of run and gun. I like doing that too on more closer range maps. And one more thing that I want to mention concerning secondaries is that if it's the last round in the half or match point, make sure you always buy a rifle or request a rifle. If it's last round, all of the money that you have doesn't really matter and you should use all of it. I will typically buy a secondary and then I will also buy a rifle to keep back sight in case I want to switch from my op. This is super helpful, especially for maps like Haven, where if I'm opping C and they're pushing A, I can just pick up my rifle and run to A so I don't have to retake with an op. And I think that about does it for this video, guys. In this video, I talked about all of the fundamentals concerning opping. When I first started playing Valorant in beta, I hardly ever touched the op until I started playing Jet and I realized how fun it is to use. The op is honestly one of the most fun weapons to use in Valorant and I would highly recommend you get good with it. So many pro players use it and it is used so much in pro play so I would highly recommend you guys invest your time in perfecting your op skills. Anyways guys, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, don't forget to go down in the description and follow me on Twitch, that is Twitch tv forward slash senna bl this was a super highly requested video so i'm glad that i'm finally able to get this out here for you guys like i mentioned earlier if you did enjoy this video don't forget to drop a like down below and subscribe to the channel for more content just like this i want to thank you guys for all of the support on the channel recently it's been absolutely crazy and i just cannot thank you guys enough for this with all of that being said guys thank you so much for watching this video and i will catch you in the next one peace out